Well, we mentioned Fine Tom, the painter. Mausolino. Uh, his real name uh, was Tommaso. Tommaso di Cristofani Fini. So that would have been Tommaso, the son of Cristofano. Uh, he's also called Mausolino Fine Tom from Panicole, which is the little town where he was born. And it's very close to where Masaccio came from. Now, once again, we may not know the exact dates. We think he was born around 1400, and there's been really questions about his birth date. And I'll tell you, not solving problems, but I'll tell you sort of what uh, people have said and made kind of consensus, and died in 1436. Um, it used to be, and you will run into this in old books, it used to be that um, authors would say that Mazzolino was older than Masaccio and was Masaccio's teacher, but they've discovered more documents and uh, more references, and it seems that they were probably pretty close to the same age. And uh, they may have been colleagues rather than master and pupil, were they rivals or were they friends? I mean, we really don't know. We see them working together on the Brancacci Chapel. Um, you know, some people have said, oh, yeah, Mazzolino didn't finish it, so Masaccio took over or something. Um, Masaccio didn't finish it either. Filipino Lippi had to, to finish it in the 1480s, uh, or on 1480, anyway. Um, so we do see them working, is it sequentially or more likely, side by side uh, in the uh, Brancacci Chapel. So, you know, maybe they were friends. Why not? Same name. Came to Florence about the same time. Uh, and incidentally, the document um, that makes us think that they're the same age uh, is because they entered the Painter's Guild in 1423. Uh, Masaccio entered the Guild in 1422, and Mazzolino entered the Guild in 1423. So presumably they're close to each other in age. Now, Mazzolino was known as Fine Tom, and of course we don't have a photograph or a portrait of either one of them. Uh, so we are left to speculate on whether that this is his appearance or his painting style. And I think you can see why this painting style. Um, we have this very dainty, charming, beautiful, graceful, delicate Madonna and child. Uh, so here we have this altarpiece. Um, with the very elaborate frame, uh, all gold leaf behind, of Mary and the baby Jesus. And uh, you know, very, very touching, actually, of the little uh, Christ child reaching out to embrace his mother, and their cheeks are next to each other. Uh, and you can also see, of course, the, the graceful curves of the uh, edge of her mantle. And, of course, the beautiful uh, tooling and the halos and uh, just, uh, you know, exquisitely tender, beautiful, fine picture of the Madonna and child. Uh, and then you can compare it to Masaccio, <laughs> where you have, uh, let's just say, a more robust style, where the emphasis is on uh, monumental figures in space, figures that just seem to have a solidity. Uh, we also see the Madonna is not as idealized. She's not. She, she could be a housefrau, perhaps, or a, a matron. Uh, as I said, there's a, the problem, of course, with the the Masaccio is that the the face has probably been abraded. Uh, but uh, you know, sort of a, a more ordinary woman uh, rather than this dainty uh, little thing over on uh, Mazzolino's side. So they're both wonderful paintings. You know, I don't want to mean to denigrate Mazzolino's fine style. But Masaccio is more forward thinking. We like to use the word avant garde. You know, he's developing further in showing the believable illusion of depth and uh, uh, figures. And here we're back to the. Uh, the Brancacci Chapel, and we're going to take a look at this long fresco uh, by uh, Mazzolino, and then we'll look at the um, Adam and Eve. Um, this is directly across, it's on the opposite wall from 
the tribute money. And it's kind of interesting how they're conceived. He's showing actually two scenes. Uh, Peter is healing a lame man uh, on our left. And our right, it's uh, raising Tabitha from the dead. He's really showed them as two separate scenes. And then in the middle, and you expect in the middle to have the most important figure going on, as you did with Masaccio's tribute money, Christ is in the center. Um, here you have these two young, fashionable men around Florence uh, just walking down the street and looking at each other. They're not even looking at what Peter's doing. So there's something curiously, do I want to say vacant, uh, about the center of the picture. You know, he's put a nice little view of the city there. Uh, and it is kind of wonderful. You see the the uh, buildings with their tiled roof and the laundry hanging out, and you see uh, uh, the people going about their business as a woman with her uh, her child, for example, in the uh, about further back. Is that distracting? Do we keep thinking, well, those, those guys in the middle should be really important because they're in the middle. So there is a weakness in the composition, if you will. On the other hand, he is using uh, this idea of uh, space cells. We have uh, two little architectural forms. I'm looking at this and I don't think they recede consistently, you know, symmetrically. Um, but you do have forms that are modeled in light and dark. Uh, figures you know, who have gestures, a gesture of amazement when this dead woman uh, sits up. Uh, and Peter has raised her from the dead. And you have the, the feeling of uh, the setting. Uh, and then, of course, you have this, the, on the other side, you have the, the lame man uh, begging. And Peter says, I don't have any money, but I can heal you. <laughs> and... Uh, He's casting shadows. You'll notice he's cast shadows here. He's uh, follow. We, we think he's probably followed Masaccio's lead on this. So the figures seem to be a little lighter, and maybe the composition isn't as powerful. And here you see that comparison. Another two paintings which tell you fine and. Uh, crude, or maybe robust, we should say, uh, Tom, in the painting style, are the paintings of Adam and Eve. We have Mausolino's Fall of Man, when Adam and Eve first take the forbidden fruit. And you'll notice they seem to be sort of silhouetted against a, a dark background. If you look really closely, you may be able to see some plant forms in that dark background. And of course, you do see uh, the tree of knowledge where uh, Eve has sort of wrapped her arm around it. And then there is the serpent who has wending his way. He's uh, twisting around the tree of knowledge. Uh, and the head comes out and it seems to be a feminine head. Uh, this is um, fairly traditional. Uh, women were believed to be... Uh, more evil than men, because it was Eve who first took the forbidden fruit, uh, which I always thought was the strangest logic I ever heard of. Because, you know, if you accept the story as true, um, the Bible says that Adam and Eve did not know good and evil until they uh, tasted of the forbidden fruit. Uh, it was to protect their innocence. So it's like uh, if you have a baby that doesn't know, you know, they not supposed to throw his toy or uh, grab the fruit from the grocery aisle or something like that. We don't say, oh, that baby is evil. We say the baby's innocent. We say the baby doesn't know any better. He's got to be taught. So here is Eve up against Satan, the father of lies. And a totally naive being who does not know that there is evil in the world is supposed to recognize the perfidy <laughs> of uh, Satan. Um, I just find their logic a little strange. But who's writing the theology are monks, men who often have uh, very limited or no contact with women, um, and they're afraid of feeling any sexual feelings, which they then say is the woman's fault, of course. Uh, but uh, women were blamed for the fall of man is the end result of all that. So sometimes Satan is even shown as a female figure. Uh, little head there. 
there's certainly this decorative pattern of the leaves up above. And Adam and Eve are kind of silhouetted against this dark space as, as curving, uh, perhaps slightly elongated forms. You know, it could be a, a decorative pattern. There's also not a lot of emotion going on in the fall of man. Okay, maybe you could say, well, of course, the expulsion is a much more emotional scene. It is. Uh, but sometimes you do see some interaction in pictures like this. So they're, they're uh, you know, just, the figures are standing there. Uh, they have uh, beautiful decorative shapes. Uh, I don't know that you get a real feeling of impending evil, actually. Um, and then you look at the expulsion. And here I've you know, cropped it down, so we're just looking at Adam and Eve. Uh, so let's compare those. Uh, Mazzolino's Fall of Man has a kind of diffuse light. You don't have uh, hard edged, sh dark shadows. Uh, Something's called kind of a blonde radiance. Uh, and Masaccio's Adam and Eve have stronger light, uh, modeled in light and dark, making the figures seem very solid. They also turn in space. They're coming out three quarters view, so this also gives them a sense of going back into space. Eve is behind uh, Adam, and they're striding forth in the world. As far as anatomy, neither is perfect by any means, uh, but Mausolino's figures don't seem to have much structure. They're soft, they're smooth, um, where Masaccio's definitely say we're solid, we're three-dimensional, um, our body parts are articulated, you know, we've got knees and um, elbows, and of course they've got elbows, both of them, but um, it just seems to be a, perhaps a bit more realistic in the uh, structure of the figure. Uh, he may have been looking at sculpture, and we saw that with the, the Venus, so it, it, you could even say they're more sculptural. Um, we talked about how Mazzolino is interested in these details, for such as the leaves, and Masaccio seems to paint with bolder, broader strokes, could we say, rather than graceful and elongated, like Mazzolino, fine tom, with these curving outlines. Uh, we have sort of monumental figures emphasizing the weight of the figure, and of course, emotion, drama, in Masaccio, you know, the whale of Eve, okay, you can't really hear it, but you think you almost you can, um, with really very little um, emotion or atmosphere for what is theologically uh, the most ominous moment in human history when the human beings first sin. We also see uh, Mazzolino is almost, uh, I can say almost a pattern. Uh, you could imagine somebody making a tapestry out of this. There's not a lot of depth. Uh, with Masaccio, of course, the depth is limited, but you, you see it. You believe that they are in the world, as it were, and can stride out. Uh, certainly the uh, archway at an angle with Adam's foot still in there gives you this period purely of transition. And as you can see, cast shadows, which we don't see with the Mausolino. So sort of uh, the ground and the background all seem to blend together. This isn't in the text, uh, but sometimes, and I've thought about just leaving it out, but it's kind of fun uh, because it's a little exercise that uh, you can do. Um, this painting is in now in the Uffizi. It's the St. Anne altarpiece, uh, Anne three times, as they say. Um, and we see St. Anne with the Virgin Mary. We're not quite sure where the Virgin Mary is seated, uh, probably on a footrest of the, or a stool maybe in front of St. Anne, the enthroned St. Anne. And then on Mary's lap is the Christ child. And then, of course, there are angels surrounding this uh, form. It's believed that this is a collaboration between Masaccio and Mausolino. And all oh, right, I will tell you, there are people who you know, disagree about some parts of it. But um, it's kind of interesting. Can you tell some parts the, the way you think their fine toms created them and others that seem to be more by 
<laughs> rough tom, uh, masaccio, maybe more monumental. And uh, maybe I shouldn't give anything away. Uh, and as I say, there you you know there's room for people to argue it. But we I, I've done this in class, and the students immediately identify each figure as who they were by. Uh, and it was it was wonderful. You can see it essentially. So what about the Virgin and Child? Mausolino or Masaccio? I think probably everybody would say, oh, it's monumental, it's solid, uh, you know, very volumetric form. Masaccio. Um, and then perhaps St. Uh, Anne as uh, uh, not quite as monumental, uh, possibly Mausolino. And then you can possibly divide up the angels. Uh, certainly this one in the little pink garment. Uh, seems dainty and fine, but just uh, not quite with the structural components that we'd expect from Masaccio Mausolino.